Have you gotten a little bit more skittish given what you've seen over the last couple of days? No, Dom. I mean, we had such a nice start to the year, and we have to remember stepping back. The long-term total return for the S&P 500 is 7.7 percent, and for fixed income, it's about 3 percent. So we're up comfortably above that level, and so it doesn't surprise me at all to start to see a little bit of a pause. Um, we could see even a, a bit of a dip just given what interest rates are doing. But I do think interest rates are going higher for the right reasons, which means that we're seeing better than expected growth. The Atlanta Fed GDP tracker for GDP for the first quarter is at 2.8%. We're coming off of 3.4% GDP in the fourth quarter. So we have such momentum in the economy that maybe the Fed doesn't have to go this year. And I know that's what we're trying to debate at this point in time. But even if they ease once or twice or three times, I don't think that's going to be materially uh, a big deal one way or the other. Maybe more psychologically it would be. But I think that the economy can handle these higher rates. If the economy can handle these higher rates, let's talk about your top picks coming up for the balance of the year. What do you think is going to be a beneficiary regardless of these market conditions? Yeah, I think I think that uh, the China recovery is sort of interesting to me. Um, I think people just kind of wrote off China, uh, myself included, last year, last couple of years, which was the right thing to do. But I think their goal is to get to 5% GDP, and they have put a number of, of plans in place, fiscal and monetary plans in place, over the last year. They focused on jobs, on employment, defense, um, uh, 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 foreign investment, the triple R cuts as well. And so I think they are trying to stimulate their economy. I don't think it's going to be this gangbusters growth numbers in, in China, but I, I don't think you need a lot because I think people really have written off this uh, this region of the world. If they've written it off, what's the best way to play it? Is there is it a direct play there or is it a U.S. company with exposure there? I tend to like the U.S. companies that have exposure in China, just given the better transparency that we get from U.S. companies um, and the better efficiencies uh, that we have and, and certainly the, the market shares that, that, that we're seeing. So Las Vegas Sands is a name for me. It was down 7 percent in the past year. It trades at 11 times EBITDA. The historical average is about 13 times. And we are seeing a pickup in gaming in uh, Macau, and that's 63 percent of their EBITDA. 37 percent of their EBITDA is Singapore. That should benefit as well. So you have this pent-up demand. You have this company going from kind of this VIP focus to mass premium and mass in general. You have operating margins that are actually ex uh, going, getting better than are better than expected. Rather, they're higher than expected, and I expect that to continue. You've got five billion dollars in cash, and they have a two billion dollar buyback. So I think this is kind of off the radar. And I like it. OK, so that's Las Vegas Sands, the top pick there. Let's talk about the under the radar plays. Uh, it, it's going to be China linked as well, right? Yeah, because I want to stay with this theme and I'm looking for kind of like good values here. And Freeport McMoran is one that I know it's had a nice run. It's up about 20 percent in the past year. But this, too, trades at about 9.5 times EBITDA. And historically, it's traded at about 20 times. So you're getting a very big discount. The company is certainly benefiting, um, will benefit not only from China recovery, but EV, housing, uh, and, and that kind of um, theme. And so this company is the number one copper producer for every 10 cents per pound change in the price of copper. That's $430 million to their EBITDA and $350 million cash flow. And in fact, on cash flow, the company has actually reduced their debt over the last several years from $6 billion to about $800 million. So they're not as levered as they once were um, and I think their free cash flow for the next couple of years could be something like two to three billion dollars, giving them ample flexibility to return that to, to shareholders as well as to plow it back into the business.